bang. Hey, folks. <laughs> welcome back. We love to welcome them in with a bang. Piece. Yeah, and the clap and the whole thing. <laughs> There's no smoking while we're doing this particular segment. Absolutely none. <laughs> this is Rebel Ed, folks. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Nigerian. He's Pete Nigerian. And we're about to go through our take on the top stories of the day, followed by unusual option activity. And then, of course, a little sports. So, Pete, let's kick it off with Walmart and Home Depot because both showed that the consumer is still strong, yep. the consumer is still spending, but is this the summer of George? Did you read <laughs> that episode on Seinfeld, Pete, where George said, I'm just going to spend everything I got. <laughs> Remember, he, he, if, if I recall, George just sat there in the chair, didn't do a damn thing, and then he couldn't move. <laughs> well, I, I think people are much more active than that. I think we really overplayed that whole thing, John. But we were led there because what Target had said, what Walmart had said. And they gave us warnings. And, and, and Walmart gave us those warnings as well. So that certainly was something. But they still beat on earnings. They still beat on their revenue. They look like they're going through a lot of what was too much inventory on the wrong side of things. They're getting through that. But that also hurts the margins to some degree. Meanwhile, at Home Depot, they just continue to kill it, John. I mean, guys like me are foolish enough to constantly go over there for my mulch and for my rock and for my this and my that. So it's not always about the new builds. It's about people taking care of their homes. But these are big moves to the upside, both Walmart and Home Depot, and it's dragging up Costco and it's dragging up Target. Yeah, and it should be because, again, people are spending still. Um, they uh, Walmart in particular talked about how groceries continue to accelerate, though, Pete. When it's going up like that, that's not good for consumers overall. So we'll see how much that might pull them back from the additional spending that they'd otherwise have. Yeah, and it's it's about margins, right? I mean, when it all said and done, we talk about margins all the time. With groceries being the area where you know you're getting new buyers in along with the old buyers, and people are getting it less expensive, there ain't no margins there, John. That's a problem as well. So something for people that that maybe are very bullish right now on Walmart. I think it's a great move. I think they did some things right, but let's just remember about those margins. Yeah. Now, Pete. Um... We both have a good friend who has 28 car dealerships on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, and somebody who's got even more is, of course, Roger Penske, the Penske Auto Group, PAG. Mm -hmm. um, only a $9 billion business, Pete. But they are <laughs> kicking butts and taking names over there because they have car dealerships, they have yep. truck leasing, they have those big trucks that they'll rent and so forth, depending what you need. And apparently business is really good and the stock reflects it just going up, up, up. Yeah. And John, when you look at the stock itself and you see that it trades in the single digits as far as the PE and for people who don't know that, that means it's very inexpensive. The price versus the earnings that they've got, great free cash flow, all the different metrics that we talk about in financials all the time, they seem to hit just about everything. Now it was still a mixed quarter, but John, it's a great place to be right now. And I think when you look at what Penske's been able to accomplish, it probably does transfer over to a lot of other different areas within the market. And you start thinking about EVs, you start thinking about different parts of, you know, the, the economy where people are spending. And this is a company that is absolutely killing it right now. Oh, and by the way, a huge short interest that squeezes these guys to the upside as well. So when you've got that working for you as well, John, things tend to move like they are today. Yeah, and Pete, it's up 18 or 19% in the past month. Yep. So uh, obviously business loves it and institutions love this name too. Yep, yep. We're going to move on to EQT, John. That one's an interesting one as well. And, uh, you know, it's natural gas. And just so everybody fully understands, this is something I've been talking about on the take for a long time. Everybody looks only at crude. Only at crude. It's not just about crude. When you look at Nat Gas and you consider the fact that we started the year, John, what? I think about three and a half. It was three and a half bucks at the, at the beginning of the year. And then you start to see where we are now and what's happened since the start of August. Every single, when you go to July and it was 550, we ran all the way up to nine and change. We pulled back a little bit. August, we started around the sevens. Here we are once again in the nines. It shows you that there's a lot of activity out there for the price of natural gas. 
EQ2 is one of the biggest, right? Uh, it definitely moves right over to them, and they are doing extremely well right now. Well, Pete, 26% in a month. That's how much this one's up. Yeah. And they're going to be doing uh, four more LNG terminals, Pete. Um, LNG is, of course, liquefied natural gas. That's how we'll get it over to Europe. That's going to be so desperate for it. And the profit margins on that are going to be huge. Yeah. So um, better to be buying it from us than Russia, I guess, Pete. Uh, so that's a good thing. How about this one, Pete? Um, you know, there were a lot of stocks, and I know you mocked Peloton for good reason. Um, the most expensive of, clothes hanger. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of stocks that did really well because of pandemic. Yeah. Um, exact science is one of them. Yeah. Um, basically, they do cancer testing. You basically, some people joke that it's a turd in a box. Because <laughs> you basically take and you put something, some fecal matter in a box and mail it off to these guys. They look at it and decide whether or not there's the potential for cancer in there. Um, but this stock has been going like this. It's yeah. just because people would rather see a doctor, right, Pete? Yeah, and then that's exactly right, John. I mean, all you've got to do is just take a look at the chart of this company and you can see exactly, okay, when did the pandemic start? Oh, okay, we had this unbelievable run to the upside like many other stocks. But then as we've come out of this pandemic, we start to see this thing just literally, as you said, it looks like a ski slope going to the downside. Now, there's a lot of different things going on here, John. I think that they've got potential in the future, but too much was baked into what was happening in the immediacy of what was going on throughout the pandemic. People do want to go see a doctor. They don't want to necessarily poop in a box and then send it off and find out what's going on. They want to hear right here, right now from the doctors themselves. They want to be in person. You can understand why they'd want to. The stock has reversed all the way back to 2018. Gives you a little bit of an idea of how things are, are really getting hit right now. But it's a, it's a, it's a great company, John, but the, uh, the idea of where it was, it got there way too fast and they still got a lot to prove. Yeah, Pete. Well, um, the other thing I'd point out, Pete, is that uh, um, this isn't the only one, like we said, you've got right. Peloton, you've got Teladoc. Teladoc has made a nice comeback, Pete. That's one that I traded out of recently. Let me give you one that I just added today. This is yeah. unusual option activity, Pete. This is WBA, Walgreens Boots Alliance. And WBA, big buying, uh, almost 2 million share equivalent, 2 million share equivalent of these uh, August 42 calls. They only have a week, Pete, for these to be right, to be something or nothing. And that's basically with the stock at 41 and a half. So just out of the money, I like the play. I'm in this one for one week or less, Pete. I'm giving you a name, John, that we talk about every single day. <laughs> and it's ChargePoint. You know, we talk about this name. We talk about batteries. We talk about, you know, the charging stations that are going to be built all around the world, blah, 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 around the country. But I'll tell you, John, this stock just hits every single. It's hit 16 times in the month of August alone. I mean, it, it gives you a little bit of an idea of how strong this is. And they've bought 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 60,000, 90,000. Well, today they bought 20,000 again. And they came in for two week out, August 26 expiring, the 18 and a half calls. They're only 65 cents, John. So this is something where with the stock just below 18 right now, can this stock actually make a move like this? It absolutely can. Will it? Time will tell, but they're rolling as well, John. So they're selling out of options that are going to expire this Friday, and they're going out one extra week. They're also going up from 17 and a half to 18 and a half. What I love about that is this is somebody who's made money and they want to make more money and they want to get a little bit more time for it. So that's why I like this one so much. I've been in this, you've been in this. It's been a great trade. It's not something where you and I just sit and hold. It's been a great trade. you got to be disciplined. When you get doubles and triples and whatever, you've got to take some off. That's the discipline we talk about all the time. Yeah, you got to have the discipline, Pete. That's what you and I preach all the time. And it's yep. discipline on losses as well as discipline on taking profits. So yep. couldn't agree more. Let's yep. dive into sports real quick, Pete. What do you got for us? Well, I think the interesting thing, John, is it's too early to do this, but why not do it anyway? I mean, it's just fun. So why not try to figure out right now who's going to win the Heisman Trophy this year? 
I'm going to say this. It's probably going to be a quarterback because everybody loves quarterbacks. They love to see the big plays. You rarely see wide receivers. You used to see running backs. Once in a while, we'll get a defensive guy whose name is in the picture, Aiden Hutchinson last year, who's playing very well right now with the Detroit Lions. He looked great in the preseason game the other night. But, John, you know what? I think it comes down to Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. This kid is a stud. Unbelievable numbers last year. Doesn't throw interceptions. Oh, and by the way, you can go down to Alabama because all they ever do is reload, and they've got a great quarterback down there in Bryce Young who already is making a lot of money through NIL. He had an unbelievable year. But the guy that I think is the good sleeper, and I say sleeper, he's on the list, but sleeper is the guy who, he, Caleb Williams, he was at Oklahoma. Now he's at USC. He also got, by the way, what, how would you like to get this, John? Through the portal, they were able to pick up the guy who won the Bolitnikoff Award last year from Pitt. He came over to USC. They got Lincoln Riley from Oklahoma coaching USC. USC's got a real chance to be a pretty interesting football team this year. Oh, yeah. And, Pete, that's one of the things I think that you and I, um, even though you would have stayed at the University of Minnesota, I get it. Um, but to not let kids transfer without yeah. wasting a year, spending a year on the sidelines. That's one yeah. of the big pluses, I think, in terms of the athletes. I don't think that the fans like it because, like you said, you could have a great player that just basically gets up and moves just like the pros. But yeah. that's one of the risks, I guess, of the NIL uh, yeah. and the portal right now. Right. We got one more, John, with the Yankees. Uh, and I only bring this up because – all the Yankees have done has been unbelievable all year, right? I mean, they've been impressive until now. <laughs> In the last 12 games, they've dropped 10 of them. The last two games, they got shut out. I mean, it's interesting to see a team with all that talent, what they'd been able to do up to the point of a couple of weeks ago. But what do you think about this, John? What does the coach, what does the manager have to do to get the team back on the right foot? Because they seem to be stumbling around a little bit right now. Yeah, well, that answer is easy, Pete. Um, he just needs to get them to relax. They're pushing too hard. Um, when that happens, you know, mistakes happen and or you don't swing as freely and things like that. So I think all they really need to do is just have something, some sort of lighthearted thing in the locker room or something, Pete. Uh, maybe a, a nice practice where the guys just get out there and have fun. And I think they'll be right back in the groove because this team is so good. There are so many games over 500, even with these recent losses, that I think they just get right back to their knitting and go higher. To show you how good they always seem to be, John, the New York Yankees, and they do pay money, they do get players. Yep. Judge is going to get the money that uh, <laughs> enough money to almost start looking like he's Warren Buffett out there, all for the right reasons, by the way. The guy does deliver. I mean, he's absolutely unbelievable. But since 2016, they've had one, and it was this this week, where they've gotten swept by shutouts in two in a row. That's happened yep. one time since 2016. That says a lot about who the Yankees are and how good they really are. Absolutely incredible to watch. What do you think about RebelCon? What do you, what do you want to talk about there, there John? Oh, my gosh. That's going to be so fun, Pete. We've already got the virtual tickets on sale. And they're $200 off until August 25th. So just go to marketrebellion.com forward slash Dallas to see all about the offerings. There are still some seats in person for those of you who want to come in person. And for those rest of you that can't, I'd say make sure that you uh, sign up for those virtual seats now while you get $200 off. Um, and with that said, Pete, I guess I'll see you on Thursday on Rebel Edge on Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Sounds good. All right. See you guys.